Good morning, Ashford students, and welcome to my presentation, Earn an A in Every Class. This is a present student presentation by Ashford University, specially prepared for Ashford University students, and I am a student preparing this presentation today. Let's start with a question, first of all. What is holding you back from achieving the grades you desire? Now, many of us say we want to get an A in every class, but maybe we're held back by lack of time or demands from our work and family. Perhaps there are other distractions or lack of confidence is always an issue. Maybe you're afraid of failure or worse yet, maybe you're afraid of success. So take a moment to just think about these things that might be holding you back from getting the grades that you would love to get in your class. And let's start from there thinking about how we can get those distractions or back out of the way or get some confidence or gave you some tools and skills to help you succeed. A little bit about me, my name is Regina Brown. I'm currently an Ashford student and I have a 4.0 GPA pending two courses, my last two courses here. I'm earning a BA in real estate because I'm a real estate broker and I've been in the business for 28 years. I'm also a keynote speaker, instructor, and author. And Ashford has asked me to share my topic that I'm so passionate about, excuse me, about which is earning a perfect A. So if you have your pins, grab them and write down this note. Success is 99% persistence. The rest is just a lot of hard work. So that's my Regina-ism that I came up with because sometimes we give up. We're right there at the end and yet we don't follow through and we're not persistent. And I found that by being persistent, I can actually accomplish a lot if I don't give up. So that's my little encouragement for you here today. Grab your pen and, and, and let's take some notes here. Just a little bit about my story before we get started. I was a smart student in school, but I was kind of lazy. That's the sad truth is I didn't try really hard. I wasn't very motivated. And my first semester at community college, I actually flunked out, which I'm going to show you in just a minute. But I came back, I persevered, and I ended up earning two AA degrees. And then I started my Bachelor of Science at Cal Poly, but I didn't have any clear goals. I didn't have any direction. I didn't know what I wanted to do. And I really didn't try very hard. Now, this time around, at Ashford, I'm earning my bachelor's, and I'm almost done because I've had 100% laser focus. I know what my goal is, and I want to stay true to my goal and finish on and finish strong. So this is my grade I was telling you about. This is my first semester at Cuesta College. I actually flunked out. Look at that. Out of five classes, four were Fs and one was a C. My GPA was 1.0, which is pretty laughable, but I just show that to you to let you know that all of us may not have had a great start, but we can have a great finish, and I'm going to show you how that. Let's talk about what is an A. Well, sometimes we think all you have to do is the bare minimum and earn an A. That's not true because an A means going over and above the average. If you do the minimum to get by, that's a C. So go over and above to earn your A. The difference between a C and an A means going from good to better to best. It means giving your 100% best. So why would you want to earn an A in every class? I know you might be thinking, well, what's, what's my motivation, right? So let me just give you a little bit of motivation here. First of all, a higher grade point average opens the door to more opportunities, such as career positions, advancement, scholarships if you're going to go on for another degree, and getting into better colleges, and more financial aid available in those colleges. So earning a higher GPA will definitely open the door for you for more opportunities. Also, you can set a good example for your children and for others around you, right? Many of us have children, like I do, that we like to encourage them to do their best, and we can do that by being a good example. And last, most importantly, is to feel satisfied knowing 
that you gave your very best, you did your best job, and here you are earning your high GPA because you tried hard and you gave it 100% effort. And there's a lot of self-satisfaction in that, isn't there? So, how do you earn an A? Well, I'll tell you how you don't earn an A. It's not by giving the teacher a shiny red apple. That's just a myth. You can excel and earn a perfect 4.0 with my foolproof system that I'm going to show you here now, which is the seven-step power formula. That's a little bit of a tongue twister, huh? All right, pal, there's my seven-step power formula. It starts with mindset, scheduling, expectations, resources and tools, good communication. I'm going to share some great student tips. And last but not least is to celebrate to get excited about your achievement, and that will help you stay focused and finish you through. Okay, so number one I said is mindset. How do you achieve success with positivity? The first one is to set goals. Set goals that are achievable. Set goals that are right in front of you. Set goals on your dream board, which I'm going to show you an example of in just a minute. And say affirmations to yourself every day. Try doing it in the morning and the evening, and that will really help you put you in a positive mindset where you're ready to achieve and work hard and stay laser focused, right? And in the end, it's all about staying focused. So positive mindset starts with understanding that school is your number one job. It's your most important job, right? So what you can do is post your list of courses right by your desk. As a matter of fact, that's what I do. I have my list of courses. I, I put it, taped it right by my desk. I look at it every day and it helps me stay on track, stay focused, know what I need to do. And it also helps me realize I'm almost at the end. I just have these few more courses, right? And make a habit not to be mediocre, but instead to be passionate, to be excited about your school to be excited about your dreams, excited about what's to follow, and all the doors that school can open for you and your degree can help you. So in staying focused, I visualized before I graduated, I went to the Astra website, you can see here, this is the stage from last year. I was on the stage this year and I was so excited, but I already knew what it was gonna look like because I was right there I had focused and visualized. I had actually started planning my graduation party way in advance. I told my friends and family about it. I put a little reminder for myself. I knew what my diploma is going to look like. So these types of visual reminders really helped me to stay focused. Also think about what kind of career advancement you're going to have, right? Because I know the industry I'm going to be in once I earn my degree. I know what career change I'm looking for, and I'm ready for that. And I know that I can't do it without my degree in hand, so I'm willing to work hard and put in the extra effort so that I can get there. All right, let's talk just for a minute about goal setting. So make a commitment to yourself, and that's how it all starts. And instead of being late or doing things just barely in the nick of time, that causes a lot of stress, doesn't it? Instead, get in the habit of being early, right? I know it's easy to procrastinate, but make it a habit instead to start early and finish early. Dig deep, challenge yourself, uncover your hidden talents. You'll be surprised at how much fortitude and strength you have inside when you start working towards your goals. Okay, and then we all know what SMART goals means, right? S-M-A-R-T, right? So set your SMART goals, right? Which is specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and timely. So if your goals have those five elements, then you know that you're going to be able to achieve them as long as you stay focused and keep working. Now I told you I'd share with you a dream board. So here is a picture of the dream board. This is just somebody's dream board of all the great things that they plan to do, that they would like to do, their future goals, and it's a very visual representation. It helps them stay focused on this by putting this up in your office or maybe your bedroom or in your living room or maybe even 
in your bathroom where you look at it every day, maybe on your mirror in your bathroom where you can focus on your goals and that gives you the motivation to keep working. So affirmations, I said try doing those in the morning and the evening. My favorite person I love to listen to is Les Brown. Right? Many of you are probably familiar with Les Brown. He's an awesome motivational speaker. And one of his favorite say sayings is, I have greatness within me. So say that to yourself, I have greatness within me. I am confident I will excel. I know I can succeed. Right? So practice your affirmations in the morning, in the evening, and that will help bolster you up for success. Because you know when we go out there, there's a lot of obstacles we have to overcome, right? So we need to make sure that we're fortified inside before we go out there and tackle all those obstacles, whether it's a tough term paper, or it's having to research something that we're not sure about, or it's math that we hate, or, or reading that we, we dread, whatever it is, you can do it. And if you tell yourself you can do it and you mentally prepare yourself and equip your mind in advance. All right, now let's go to number two, everybody's favorite topic, scheduling, right? So you have to become a ninja scheduler in order to meet all your goals. For scheduling and time management of school, many of us, we go to work, we have families, we have community responsibilities that we volunteer for, or we're busy at our church, and then we have school on top of all of this. So how do we get it done? Great scheduling, that's the only answer by managing our time well, blocking out time. Also, you have to remember that there are some things you might have to give up while you're in school. Sacrifice now for the payoff later. And it all starts by planning ahead. This is a sample Microsoft Outlook calendar. I love to use Microsoft Outlook. I use it for all of my cal uh, calendar needs. And I actually time block everything so that I can make sure I get my assignments done. As a matter of fact, I don't wait till the day an assignment is due to start working on it. I usually start working on it a week in advance, sometimes even two weeks in advance. And my goal is to turn in every assignment early and I time block out the time that I'm going to need in order to have my calendar ready. So let's talk a little bit about week, weekly scheduling. I mentioned time blocking. The other thing that I do is I account for what I call the fudge factor, right? I add a little bit of padding onto my scheduling. So for example, if I think it's going to take me an hour and a half to write this essay, I'm going to schedule two hour time block instead of an hour and a half. I want a little extra time because you know how time kind of slips away once you start and we're not always great at estimating or things come up. So add a little extra time in there. Create a good habit of working on things in advance and make a personal commitment to yourself to have every assignment finished early. As a matter of fact, most of my assignments, I try to have them done before the assignment is assigned or that same day so that I'm not stressed out at the last minute trying to struggle and finish my assignment later. So let's talk a little bit about homework. Now many of us have a difficult time staying at home because there are distractions, whether it's the the husband or wife, or it's the kids, or the dogs and cats, or the phone ringing, or the TV. So what I do is I've created a dedicated study area without distractions in my home. That way I can make sure that I'm very focused. Now if you have children, it could be a little difficult with them, but here's my suggestion. Have a family study time. So while the kids are doing their homework, you can do yours, right? Everybody is sitting around the dining room table, all doing their homework, having some quiet time and spending it with each other, encouraging each other by studying together. And last but not least, I'm going to say something that might be a little controversial, but housework can wait, at least temporarily. For me, housework can be a distraction because I'd rather be cleaning up and doing things instead of doing my homework. So I've had to put that all aside for a little bit and really focus on my homework. And then once my homework is done, then I can go do the housework. So that's one of my tips that I use is that I make sure homework is first. That's my first priority. Everything else can wait as soon as my essay or my discussion is finished or my reading of my textbook, then I can go tackle the other things that need to be done. 
And of course, we do need to make some sacrifices, right? We, you, we've made a commitment to go to school. We're going to see it through, get our degree. And in order to do that, we need to make a few sacrifices. Now, I know we have the habit of watching TV, social media, sports, hobbies, all those types of things. And for me, it's been a little bit of a challenge, but I did make some sacrifices. And I know it's, it's difficult sometimes, but I just know that school is so more important to me because once I earn my degree, I know all the rewards are there and I'm willing to make those sacrifices. So think a little bit about what you can give up to make that time available in your schedule. And it helps when you know it's only temporary, right? I have that date on my calendar. I know the date I'm going to be finished with my degree. It's coming up really soon. And I'm willing to sacrifice because I know it's temporary and there's a great reward in the future. Okay, a little bit about planning ahead. Okay, you want to start by reading the syllabus. Looks like the lights just went off in here. Hang on. Okay, a little bit about planning ahead, and you want to start off by reading the syllabus and marking the due dates on your calendar as soon as you start a new course. I will often go in, I'll find out what assignments are due, I'll read all five weeks and figure out what I need to do and when, and mark the dates on my calendar. Now, I don't mark just the due dates, I mark several days in advance that I'd like to actually block out time to work on it and possibly even a week in advance to start working on whatever that assignment is going to be. I also set pop-up alerts. I, I just showed you a calendar in Microsoft Outlook. I use that to set my pop-up alerts to remind me. And if you still have your notes and you have your pin out, go ahead and write this down. This is what I found out in one of my recent courses that was very challenging for me. I found out that Overcoming obstacles builds character and confidence, right? So if you do that one thing that you think you can't do, but you persevere and you actually do it, then what do you have? You have confidence that the next time in a more difficult class, you can succeed in that one, right? Character doesn't come by just giving up and walking away. Character comes by succeeding, tackling things that are challenging and overcoming obstacles, whether it's a, for me it was a statistics class that was extremely difficult, and once I got through that class, I said to myself, you know, if I can get a good grade in this class, I can work hard and get a good grade at any class, right? It was a very challenging class for me, and I, I know we all have those, right? But by going ahead and doing it anyway, you can feel confident that you're going to succeed on the next task, whatever that is, or the next class. All right, number three, let's talk about expectations, knowing what's required of you. It's important to understand expectations so that we know what we need to do to earn that A or that perfect grade or that high GPA or whatever our goal is. So start out by looking at the weekly learning objectives. Look at the grading rubric and see what's needed of you in order to earn a distinguished grade, right? Not just a basic minimum work grade, but a distinguished grade in A, right? Go through the discussion questions, the assignments, and the journals. And I'll tell you what I do is I have a little template in Microsoft Word, and I pull in all of the discussions, all of the dis assignments, and I put them in a Microsoft Word document. And then I go through there, and I highlight the key words. And I create headings and subheadings based on those prompts. And that way I can make sure to answer every question completely and correctly. And I'll show you some examples of those as we keep going here. So this is a grading rubric. And you can see distinguished, which is circled over on the left, right, which is an A. It means going over and above the minimum. You can see the basic in the middle is, you know, the minimum. But by going over and above is where you distinguish yourself and you earn the A. It's not by just doing the very minimum required to get by. Okay, here's an example of what I was showing you. And there's basically, this is a, a this was a writing prompt. And what I did is I, I broke it down into sections. 
and you can see this one had one, two, three, four, five different sections, five different questions that were being asked of me or prompts. So each of those prompts I gave a heading to. And under the heading, I put the prompt asking me the question. And under that where it says insert content, that's where I put my own comments and where I type in my own work. And I do it based upon what the prompt is. So that way I make sure that I answer each and every question thoroughly and completely. You can see where I've also used my highlighter on Microsoft Word to highlight the important things that I need to make sure that I catch. Right? So I go through and highlight and then that's what my writing starts. And then I go back later, I remove the red text, which was the writing prompt, of course. But I use that to guide me throughout the process. Right? And also I found out that by having headings, it helps me get a better grade because the instructor can quickly and easily see that I've met each one of the prompts that are being asked for in here, that I'm not just you know, freewheeling or making things up, but each item that I answer has a, an answer to one of the prompts there. And that's how you get a better grade, right? That's how you exceed the expectations. That's how you have a distinguished answer by making sure that you follow this and then go over and above the minimum. Okay, so let's talk for a moment about instructor's expectations. Now what I like to do is ask the instructor if they have anything special that's required or anything different because in addition to what's written in the Ashford um, course, you know, the prompts, the uh, directions, some instructors are going to have additional things that they want. For example, page counts might be important to some instructors or the types of resources used. For example, one of my instructors insisted on only scholarly resources, peer-reviewed articles. So everything that we researched had to be scholarly in that class. Page numbers for citations or quotes is really important to some instructors. So make sure you know what that instructor expects in order for you to be able to meet and exceed those expectations. Also, once you get your first grade back or your first assignment, your first discussions, Go in and read the instructor's comments and use those comments to improve your next essay or your next discussion. Right there's showing you if you want to get an A, here's how you do it. So you just read their comments and follow what they ask you to do. And if you have a question, be sure to email the instructor, get clarification, right? Get all your questions answered. Make sure you're clear and on the same page. All right, let's go on to number four tools and resources right so it says here be a little curious about what you're going to do first let's take a little survey and let's find out what resources are available to you do you have ashford resources do you have tech tools do you have key people well the answer is yes you have all of those available to you so we'll go over those in just a minute so first let's talk about ashford resources right Starting with the Ashford Library, I have to tell you, I am so amazed at the great information available in the Ashford Library. There are hundreds, thousands, and tens of thousands of resources available. It's a great way to find those important scholarly and peer-reviewed articles. Now, if you're like me, I started in college many, many years ago, and we didn't have the internet. I would have to go to the library physically and spend hours and hours and hours trying to find articles, reading, reviewing books and, and magazines and journals. And it, it was very time consuming. Come on, do we have it any easier than just clicking a button now, right? What could be easier? I love the Ashford Library. So many resources available. So take advantage of the resources that are available. Also, with the Forbes School of Business. We also have Forbes business articles that are available, which has been very helpful to me, right, because I'm a real estate major in the College of Business, so definitely the, the business articles help. Also the Writing Center. Now if you haven't used the Writing Center, you've got to give it a try. Right, the Writing Center has a paper review, it has tutorials, many articles and things online, there's a whole section on APA documents and what you need to do to make sure your document is in compliance. So 
So take advantage. There are hundreds of resources to you available to you. The tutoring center is another great place, and many students aren't aware that they have access to all of these. Right? If you need help, start with the tutoring center. Webinars. I have watched some really great webinars, but there are webinars, some live, some pre-recorded. For example, how to use Microsoft Word to insert citations for your bibliography, right? for your table of contents, for APA style in your document. So take advantage of these resources. Work smarter, not harder. Don't be overwhelmed. Just take advantage of what's available to you and let Ashford resources guide the way for all the tools that you need. Okay, so I've got one more Regina-ism for you. It's never too late for a fresh start. I found out, because I put off going back to school for years and years and years, but I found out it's never too late, right? Even if you're 50 or older, it's never too late for a fresh start. And you know what else I found out? It's never too late for a great ending, right? A great graduation party with your diploma in hand. So no matter how old you are or what stage you're, you are at in your life, just I would urge you to persevere on and finish strong. All right, now let's talk about those cool tech tools available to you. First is Microsoft Word. Now, if you don't have Microsoft Word, you will need to use that. Don't try to use your phone, right, or your tablet with the, the little halfway programs. You need the full version of Microsoft Word because that's where the citations are and the bibliography tools that you can use to make your paper APA compliant. Also, be sure to get a Grammarly account. I love Grammarly. You can get a free account through Ashford, and what it does is allows you to uh, edit your documents online. For example, if you post a discussion online, Grammarly will come up and kind of underline those misspelled words in red and also help you out with some of the uh, spelling, and all of the um, typos that you might have in there, punctuation, capitalization, and all the mechanics of writing. So get Grammarly. It's free. And what else is free? The thesis generator. I found this one day when I was looking around for different uh, articles about thesis statements. And I found a thesis generator on Ashford. It's a very cool way to get started with your paper by helping write a good thesis. Okay, also, there's another cool thing. In the Learning Tools section, there's something called the Writing Reviser. Right? You can submit your paper and get it revised, or at least get some help with the, um, your spelling and, and things that you need to make your paper shine and look really great. And the last cool tech tool that we're going to talk about is the Originality Check and Turnitin. Now, in my Gen 499 course, which I'm taking right now, our final paper can have a maximum of 15% quoted material. So how do I know what's when it's at 15%? Well, I'm going to turn my paper in to turn it in and get an originality check and find out if it's over the 15%. Do I need to edit my paper, right? Why wait for the teacher to give me a not so good grade? Why don't I just be proactive, do it in advance, do the originality check, and then I can find out if I've met that expectation or not. So five really great cool tools that you need to make sure you can earn an A in every course. Now let's talk about the resources. Now, as I said earlier, what I do is I find resources, I make a list of them, and then I refer to it throughout the class. So at the very beginning of the class, I'll go in, pull all the resources in, do my research, find scholarly sources and journals, books, and all those things that I need for the course. I make a list of it in a, a Microsoft Word document, and then I use that throughout the course to refer back to it. And of course, I keep continue adding more resources as I go along. This is a revision checklist, which is very cool. If this is something that is not your expertise, is writing. It's a great little checklist to help guide you. This is from the Ashford Writing Center, one of the many cool tools available there. All right, let's keep going. Number five is communicate. There are a lot of key people in your life that are here to support you and help you succeed. All you have to do is just reach out and connect with them, right? 
So the first one is your instructor. Start by communicating early and often with your instructor to find out exactly what's needed, right? They're just an email away. Use your Microsoft Outlook account and it's already built in to your Ashford uh, homepage there. Use your, your Ashford Microsoft Outlook account and email your instructor with any questions you have. Also, stay in touch with your academic advisor. Keep your academic advisor informed of your progress along the way. Okay, what else? You also have a career advisor at Ashford and CHAMP's peer mentoring program. Now, I know that not everybody is in that program, but if, it, if you'd like a little additional help, you can ask your advisor about becoming a mentee in the CHAMP's peer mentoring program, whereas an experienced student will mentor a newer student. So those are four people that can help you and be on your side rooting for your success. They're available for you. All you need to do is just reach out and ask, right? Most important is your instructor, right? Okay, so your instructor, when you're communicating with your instructor, you should address him or her as professor and not just by first name, right? This is a sign of respect for a person who is your teacher and has earned more advanced degrees than you and has given you their wisdom and knowledge. So if an instructor has earned a doctorate degree, that instructor should be addressed as doctor. Unless he or she has asked you to not call them doctor or it's okay to address them by first name, but this is always the courteous way to assume they're professor or doctor, right? Now your instructor is somebody who can give you guidance to help achieve an A so if you do run into trouble, communicate with that person early and often, right? I know that if you're um, not having a, a great time, if you're, you know, challenged a little bit, don't wait till the last minute. Don't wait till the day the assignment is due. Take the initiative to reach out, ask the instructor for help, and you know what's going to happen? Your instructor will give you guidance and tell you what they expect and uh, direct you to the correct resources to help you earn an A. So take advantage of all the people who are here supporting you, and most importantly is be polite and respectful, right? All right number six, I'm going to give you some great tips to become a standout student. <clears throat> so let's talk about a great student blitz, right? My number one tip is read every day. How does reading help you become a better student? Well, when you go to college, you have to read the textbooks. You have to read study materials. You have to read journals. You have to read reports and digest all of that information. So by becoming a better reader will help you succeed in school. Now, I suggest putting aside a little bit of time, maybe 15 or 20 minutes at the beginning of the day or maybe at the end of the day when you can read and just practice reading. And it doesn't have to be anything boring. You can read for fun, just as long as you get in the habit of reading. Reading helps you realize a good grammar structure. It teaches you new words that you learn in context, right? So reading is really valuable. And along with that is writing. I suggest get into the habit of writing. Make it a practice that you do every day. Now, I'm not just talking about typing on your computer or you know texting on your phone but really actually taking a pen and a piece of paper and writing. Now the reason I suggest that is because when you're typing you know, on your computer, that's more of a process-oriented task. Whereas when you're writing on a piece of paper with your hand, you're actually tapping into the creative side of your brain and it starts the ideas flowing, right? So get in the habit of reading every day practicing writing every day, and developing good study habits. Putting aside time every day. I usually study for at least two hours a day, so that's a minimum, right? Two hours a day is, is a good time block to put aside. And then when I have assignments, it's going to be more. It could be you know, six hours that day if there's an assignment that I'm working on. So get in the habit of developing good study habits. And most importantly, Last but not least is the part that a lot of us dread, which is getting feedback, right? 
getting feedback to a lot of us, it means like we're going to give our paper to somebody and they're going to mark it up with a bunch of red marks and hand it back. And that could be heartbreaking. We've worked so hard on a paper and to have somebody be so critical of our work, that can be a little tough. But you know what? I need that feedback because I want to grow and get better. And for me to develop, I need to learn what I'm doing wrong and I need to learn better things to do. Right? So it's important to get that feedback, whether it's from your you know, classmates or your instructor. I actually get my paper edited by several different people, including my mom. She's my favorite editor, and she's always willing to look at my papers before I submit them. My final papers for each course has been carefully edited with a ton of comments by my mom. Now, I don't incorporate all of her comments, but she's great at proofreading and looking at the overall picture and telling me, you know, maybe you need more of this, maybe you need less of this, this word is spelled wrong, you know, sometimes spell checker doesn't catch them all, so don't rely on spell checker. I always take my documents, I print them out, and then I take a pen and I go through and I read each line out loud, right? And that helps me edit and proofread my papers as well. And last but not least is find a mentor or a model. Now that is a person who can give you some guidance, right? A mentor is somebody that says, you know, I've been where you're at. I'm going to throw you a lifeline and I'm going to bring you up with me. Somebody who reaches down and pulls you up the ladder. Now it doesn't have to necessarily be somebody in your course, but it could be somebody who you admire as a successful person and somebody who can encourage you on that path. Somebody that can hold you accountable. Also, sometimes you might not find that mentor right away, but you can find a model. So let me explain what a model is. A model is a template or a guide you can follow. Now, for example, in many of our discussions, you're going to notice that there's always a couple of students who have really great discussions. How do you know? Because you go in and you read their answers, right? They're posted so every student in the class can see them. So you go in and you see somebody who has a really great discussion. So you use that as a model. Now, I'm not talking about copying their content. I'm not talking about plagiarism, which is illegal and unethical. What I'm talking about is using a guide as a template. For example, if that student discusses every question and answers it very thoroughly, maybe that's what you can do to earn an A. If that student lists three or four scholarly sources at the end of every discussion, maybe that's something you can consider doing yourself. Right? If they have headings where they've purposely answered every item, in the prompt, use that as a guide for yourself, right? To use those same prompts and answer every question thoroughly and completely. So again, those are five tips to being a great student. That's just what I call my blitz because, you know, we're going kind of fast here. There's a lot of material and so I just call it my little blitz, just a, a take on it. All right, here's an example of what I do. This is actually from my Gen 499 course, and you can see that this is the prompt for the paper, right? And what I've done is I've taken that prompt or that um, assignment directions, and I've cut and pasted it into my Word document, and then I go in and I highlight the most important things so I don't miss any of them. I want to make sure that I understand the assignment expectations. So do you see how each of these are highlighted? And I keep that on my paper until right before I turn it in. And I make sure that all the highlighted items I've discussed thoroughly. And I've met the expectations and gone over and above. Okay, here's another one, the uh, importance of becoming a global citizen. I'm not giving away any secrets here. But basically, you can see where I took the prompt and I started sentences that actually answered the prompts. Now, I didn't put my answers in here because... You don't want to give away all the answers that another student has done or another student's work, right? But you can see how I used each of these prompts to start my questions for the answers for every paragraph. Okay. All right, one more thing on the student blitz. Here's my one takeaway tip. Don't try to memorize all the material. There's too much to memorize. It could be 
you know, so new that it could be overwhelming to you. So instead of trying to memorize everything, instead internalize it, relate it to your everyday life and actually try to learn about it as if it was something that you're going to be doing in the future. And by doing that, you can actually remember better instead of just trying to remember terms and, and what they mean, right? So also visualize things. Use graphs and pictures to help you learn. And then I do memorization, but I do it with, I use little tricks of things. You know, if I write out something, I find, you know, there, maybe there's three points. They each start with a T, and that helps me remember, okay? All right, another great tip is ask a friend to join you in the journey. Get a study buddy if you can so you don't feel isolated and alone, but somebody that you can bounce ideas off of, somebody that you can talk to about your progress, somebody that's going to hold you accountable and make sure that you're budgeting your time well to get in there and get that homework done, somebody that will encourage you along the path. And number seven is celebrate success. You've worked so hard it's time for you to plan a party because you're reaching your goals, right? So to measure those milestones, you want to track your progress. I'm going to show you in just a minute how I track my progress. But make sure you reward yourself at every stage along the way, and then plan a party. Okay, so here is my little um, sheet that I had that I used during my time in Ashford. And it's kind of hard to see, but on the left side, I have each of my courses, and then I put a little X when I'm finished with that course. So when I felt overwhelmed and I didn't want to complete a term paper and I was sick of doing homework and it was late at night, I looked at my little progress sheet here and I could see, and I said to myself, Regina, you've completed five courses. You can do this one, right? You only have four more left or whatever it is. Right, so be persistent, be consistent, and having a chart helps you know where you're at and helps keep you focused. I talked about rewarding yourself. Sometimes it's hard to keep going, right? I know some, there's some days I sit in my office and I sit in my office and work all day for eight or 10 hours straight. And that could be a little bit of a stretch, so build in some rewards. For example, if you finish your assignment a day early, you can take the next day off and you can do something fun with your family. You can go for a walk or have an ice cream or watch that TV show that you had to tape earlier, right? So think about how you can build in rewards for yourself for finishing early and doing a great job. And of course, plan that all important graduation party. Woo hoo! Who's excited? Invite your friends and family to come celebrate your graduation with you. This makes it more real. It also helps you be accountable. You can't back out now. You're almost at the finish line and everybody's coming to your party. They're looking forward to it. Acknowledge the sacrifices that you've made along the way and probably your family has made a few sacrifices to help you get through school too, right? So thank those people who encouraged you, supported your journey, and celebrate together, right? It's a it a, could be a group achievement, right, if many people have helped contribute to your success. So in conclusion, A is not for Apple. A is for achieve, and that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be achieving success with my seven-step power formula. Remember, number one is mindset. Number two is scheduling. Number three is expectations. Number four is resources and tools. They're available for you free. Use them, right? Number five is communicate. Number six, I gave you some great student tips and a little blitz. And number seven is celebrate. So now that we've finished showing you the seven-step power formula to earn an A in every course, do you feel more confident and prepared to achieve better grades? So is your answer yes, I'm going to refocus now? Is it yes, now I realize I need to put a better plan in place, or is it yes and thank you for the great idea? So just think about that a little bit. Think about how you can take all these great ideas and apply them. Do you have any questions? If you do have questions, be sure to respond online, and we will answer back as soon as we can to get all of your questions answered.
Thank you very much to the Univer Ashford University students, staff, and faculty for having me here today. I'm honored, humbled, and very excited to be a part of Ashford University and to share my knowledge that I've learned along the way with all the other successful students out there who are also going to be graduating very soon, right? So that was how to earn an A in every class. And I thank you for staying tuned and staying with us today. Good luck to you. You're, you're almost done. Just keep going, okay? Earn an A. Woohoo!